In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to help you be more efficient in your work with Orchestra. Recently, I had a friend of mine who had some questions about some scripting that he was doing to make his work more efficient. And what I was specifically was talking about with him were these input source strings. And the input source string goes in your your variable or your your attribute for communicating with external devices, whether it's a PLC or some other serial device. In this case, we're talking about a Modbus PLC. And I wanted to go back to our original example where we had analog input integer. And this, the input um, source string for the analog input integer, it, refer, it refers back to the DDE Suite Link client, the topic name in the client, and then the actual Modbus address. So you have two dot fields, or two decimal points, in your input source string to delineate object name, topic name, Modbus address. So the question comes in when we have a spreadsheet where we're trying to deal with all of these objects for our galaxy. My friend actually has thousands of these in a column that have to be dealt with and what he wanted to do was separate just the Modbus address apart from the input source string, from a column of input source strings, create another column that had just the Modbus address. And there's a lot of a lot of different ways of doing this, but he wanted to do it in a script. We're gonna I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that in a script. First thing we're gonna do is go to macros and view our macros. You notice we don't have any macros in here, so the first step is to create a new macro. We'll go to Macros, Record Macro, and put in the macro name. We're going to call it Split Addresses. Stop Recording, View Macro. We now have our Split Addresses macro, and our buttons are active, so we can go to Edit. And you can see that it has created a new module with a new subroutine macro called split addresses and it put some comments in there for us. Anytime you have an apostrophe in VBA or Visual Basic for Applications that's going to be a comment field. So let's open this up. The first thing we're going to do, and I'm just for sake of brevity, I've already done this so I'm just going to create and go and, and explain as I go. So we're going to do our variables, and I've created an integer variable for the last row, a variant variable that's going to be an array, string variable for our actual Modbus address, and then a worksheet variable that's going to be the actual worksheet object that we're going to be working with. So now that we've created our initial variables, the very next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you a framework that we're going to set up for this whole for this whole macro. This macro, this first line right here, the application display alerts, it just tells Excel not to not to say anything. Um, we don't want any prompts. Each worksheet now, using the worksheet object, in the active workbook worksheets, we're going to scroll through them. And here's where we're going to take our, I'm going to create another string worksheet name. We're going to put the contents of the WS of the worksheet name in it. Excel has a really good debugging tool. It's called in, in step into. Literally what it does is it steps you through your code. The F8 key debug step into. If you notice the F the F8 key actually steps it through one one line at a time. And let's go ahead and put this in a watch window so we can see what's happening there. So I'm going to press the F8 key and as I press it, it's going to walk through. So the first sheet that we're dealing with is sheet 1. and The next sheet is test sheet. So we've demonstrated that we've now have the ability to go through every sheet in our workbook. I created two sheets, sheet 1 being the default sheet and then test sheet I added and that's where I put my data. So we have two sheets, sheet one and test sheet. And we've we've shown 
that with our code we have right here, it'll actually step through each and every sheet in our workbook. All right, the very next thing we're going to do, let's complete out our structure. Now the select case needs an in select. The width needs an end width. All right, so there's our structure. And what you'll see is when it gets to the test sheet, it'll actually scan in there. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and put a last row and we'll explain that one as it goes. Pressing the F8 key, it skips until it finds sheet one. Or excuse me, test sheet. So it's now it's found test sheet, and what I want to do here is put this in the watch. See what happens. Is it went to the range using the row count, went all the way down, and then back up. So they put the first from the bottom. They put the first row that had data in it. So in other words, what that, what that line of code just did was it went all the way to the bottom of our spreadsheet and then from the bottom it came back up and looked for the first used cell and that became our number. In our case it's cell number 5. If you go back and look at our data it says 5. So we know that our last row of useful data is cell 5 from the bottom. Okay, we're going to add another for next loop. Then I'm going to put a watch of this. And what you're going to see is that each time it scans that, it's going to load the data from that cell into our string. As it scans through, it's going to load the data from that cell into this variable. So again, we're going to do our debug step into and I'm hitting the F8 key, we'll scan through, looking for test sheet, we found test sheet, and we're going to load up our last row, which is 5, and then each, starting at row 1, if you notice, it here is the contents of the cell, right here in string modbus address. Each time I hit the F8 key, it'll step through another one of the cells, until it gets through all five cells. Alright, the next code is going to actually split, and I'm going to comment this out just for a minute until we're ready to look at it. So this variant array test string will hold the contents of the split, and there will be however many decimal points in that string it's going to create a split. So in our case it's going to create two splits or three elements of the array. But if you, had, if you had a longer string with more decimal places, you'd get more elements. Let's show you real quick. So, step into, pressing the F8 key, we go down through until we get to our test sheet, find the last row, load the cell data. Now, we've created, in our variant, if you'll notice, we now have split the string into three, three elements. The first element contains the DDE sweet link name, object name. The second element is contains our topic name, and the final element contains the actual Modbus address, and that's what we want to put in our other cell. And that's what we'll do then next. Is we'll take go ahead and let's take that comment off of there. This range u dot value is the cell that I want to put the variant into. So index two, which is actually element three will go into our cell value. So now let's do our debug step into again. I'm pressing the F8 key. And what we should notice then is in our range, we should have the value, and, and there it is. Okay. So now I can run my macro from the spreadsheet by going view and just click run and there they all are. Now 
The next thing I want to talk about is errors. So let's clear these. And then let's take this guy out. So now we have an empty cell. And let's run that. Oops. Running an empty cell in this particular code block is going to give us an error because now we have a variant that doesn't have any data and it's empty. So how are we going to fix that? What we're going to do is we're going to add an if statement in our macro to skip. This is the code that gets broken with an empty cell. So we'll just say if string is empty little reverse logic because if it's not empty, run it. And we've got to run it. Now we need a then and an end if at our block. So what this will do is this, we created so we created an if then structure that if the string is not empty, then do that. Otherwise don't. Now when we run it It'll, it should skip, and it does. It doesn't crash. It goes ahead and finishes everything, but it just skips that one cell. And you can take it a step further. Instead of an if, then for empty, you can actually just say on error, go to error. This is a label, and then we'll create a label here. Okay. So what this will do is any error when it tries to run these two st strings, it will skip. It has the same effect, but it's a little more a little more robust. So we go back over here, delete it, and run it, and it works the same. And that concludes this exercise on how to use Excel to split the Modbus address from an input source string.